How are you guys doing? Today is Monday, September 13th, 2021. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review the elite matchups and performances from yesterday, Sunday, September 12th, 2021, the very first Sunday of the 2021 NFL season, along with a point at virtually every other active season at this moment. Um, And of course, I'm going to preview everything that's going on today as we navigate through the world of sports one day at a time, taking a quick snapshot of where we are in the year. The MLB season is a month away from being over. The co- we're about a couple of weeks into the college football season. We're into the very first week of the NFL season. And it looks it seems as though the NF- the NBA season is a little more than a month away, just to get a sense of where we are. And without further ado, I'm going to get into what went down for the first Sunday of the NFL season. Starting off in Atlanta, the Atlanta Falcons hosted the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles would pull off a 32-6 road win to beat the Falcons in their first game of the season. For the Falcons, their elite starting quarterback, Matt Ryan completed 21 of his 35 passes, throwing for 164 yards. Their leading rusher, Cordell Patterson, had 54 yards on seven carries. Their leading receiver, Calvin Ridley, had 51 yards on five receptions. On the defensive side of the ball for Atlanta, their lead, their middle linebacker, Deion Jones, had 11 tackles for the day, leading the team. And for Philadelphia, their starting quarterback, Jalen Hurts, would throw for 264 yards and three touchdowns. He would also run for 62 yards on the ground, giving him 326 total yards of offense. Their leading rusher, Miles Sanders, had 74 yards on 15 carries. Their leading receiver, their elite wide receiver, Devontae Smith, would have 71 yards on six receptions and a touchdown. Additionally, on the defensive side of the ball, Avante Maddox and Eric Wilson led the team in tackles as they both had nine. With this win, the Philadelphia Eagles are now 1-0 to start their season. The Atlanta Falcons are now 0-1 to start theirs. Moving to Buffalo, the Buffalo Bills, the reigning AFC East champs, hosted the the Philadelphia the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Pittsburgh Steelers would end up beating the Bills 23-6 after they outscored the Bills 17-6 in the second half. The Steelers would score all 23 of their points in the second half. For the Buffalo Bills, their elite starting quarterback, Josh Allen, would complete 30 of his 51 passes, throwing for 270 yards and a touchdown. He also ran for 44 yards on nine carries, giving him 314 total yards of offense. Their leading rusher, Devin Singletary, had 72 yards on 11 carries. He also had eight yards through the air, giving him 80 yards of offense. Their leading elite wide receiver, Stephon Diggs, had 69 yards on nine receptions. Cole Beasley, their other all-pro wide receiver, had 60 yards on eight receptions. Emmanuel Sanders had 52 yards on four receptions. On the defensive side of the ball, Teron Johnson led the team in tackles as he had seven of them for the day. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, their elite starting quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, will complete 18 of his 32 passes, throwing for 188 yards and a touchdown. Um, And then on the defensive side of the ball, their elite safety, Minka Fitzpatrick, would lead the team in tackles. He had 10 as he shared that honor with Devin Bush, uh, their linebacker. With this win, the Pittsburgh Steelers are now 1-0 to start their season, and the Buffalo Bills are now 0-1 to start theirs. Jumping out to Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Bengals hosted the uh, Minnesota Vikings. And in this matchup that went all the way into overtime, the Bengals would win it by a field goal in overtime, winning it 27 to 24. For the Minnesota Vikings, their quarterback, Kirk Cousins, threw for 351 yards and two touchdowns on the day. Their leading rusher, their elite running back, Dalvin Cook, would finish with 61 yards on 20 carries as he had a touchdown. He also had 43 yards through the air, which would give him 104 total yards of offense. Their leading receiver was Adam Thielen. He had 92 yards on nine receptions and two touchdowns and then on the defensive side of the ball Eric Kendricks had 15 tackles on the day Nick Vigil had 10 for Cincinnati their starting quarterback Joe Burrow would throw for 261 yards and two touchdowns the Bengals leading rusher Joe Mixon had 127 yards on 29 carries as he ran for a touchdown he also added 23 yards through the air so that would give him 150 total yards of offense the Bengals leading receiver Jamar Chase Joe Burrow's old college receiver had 101 yards on five receptions as he had an as he had a touchdown for himself on the defensive side of the ball jesse bates 
Blitz the third would lead the team in tackles as he had nine of them. Jermaine Pratt would recover a fumble. With this win, the Cincinnati Bengals are now 1-0 to start their season, and the Minnesota Vikings are now 0-1 to start theirs. Jumping out to Detroit, Michigan, the Detroit Lions hosted the San Francisco 49ers. The Niners would get their first win of the season, beating the Lions 41-13. to They would get the, the, the difference would come in the first half as the 49ers outscored the Lions 31 to 10 in the first half. For the Detroit Lions, their start their newest starting quarterback, Jared Goff, threw for 380, 338 yards, three touchdowns and a pick. He also ran for 14 yards, so he had 352 total yards of offense. Um, their leading rusher, Jamal Williams, would finish with 54 yards on nine carries and a touchdown. He also had 56 yards through the air, so he had 110 total yards of offense. The Lions' leading receiver their, was their tight end, TJ Hawkinson, who had 97 yards on eight receptions, and he had a touchdown. On the defensive side of the ball, Tracy Walker the third and Will Harris would lead the team in tackles as they both had 10 of them on the day, or they both had seven of them. Jamie Collins Sr. had five tackles on the day as he would finish with a recovered fumble. Their elite corner, Jeff Okuda, would finish with four tackles before he had a season-ending injury. For the San Francisco 49ers, their starting quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, threw for 314 yards and a touchdown. Their first-round pick, Trey Lance, was one for one as he threw a five-yard touchdown on his only pass attempt. For the Niners, their leading rusher, Elijah Mitchell, Mitchell, would have 104 yards on 19 carries and a touchdown. Their leading receiver, Debo Samuel, had 189 yards on nine receptions and a touchdown. Um, and then on the defensive side of the ball, Fred Warner would finish with 11 tackles of his own. And then Dre Greenlaw would finish with, an, with a pick six as he returned to 39 yards to the house. With this win, the San Francisco 49ers are now 1-0 to start their season, and the Detroit Lions are now 0-1 to start theirs. Uh, jumping out to Nashville, Tennessee, the Tennessee Titans hosted the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals would end up beating the Titans 38-13 as, no, as neither team scored in the fourth quarter, so these are all three third-quarter scores. Uh, for the Tennessee Titans in this matchup, their starting quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, threw for 202 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Their elite or I guess also on the ground, Tannehill ran for 17 yards off two carries and a touchdown. So he would have 229 total yards of offense with two touchdowns. Their leading rusher, their elite running back, Derrick Henry, had 58 yards on 17 carries. Um, and then on the receiving end, their elite wide receiver, Julio Jones, at 29 yards on three receptions in his debut. The leading receiver for Tennessee was Chester Rogers, who had 62 yards on four receptions. On the defensive side of the ball, Janoris Jenkins would lead the team in tackles as he had eight of them. Kevin Bayard would finish with an interception along with his three tackles for Tennessee. And for the Arizona Cardinals, their elite young starting quarterback, Kyler Murray, would complete 21 of his 32 passes, throwing for 289 yards, four touchdowns, and a pick. He also ran for 20 yards on the ground and an additional touchdown. So he had 309 total yards of offense. Four touchdowns or five total touchdowns on the day. Um, and like I said, he only turned the ball over once. There, the Cardinals leading rusher was Chase Edmonds. He had 63 yards on 12 carries and he also had 43 yards on four receptions. He had 106 total yards of offense for the Cardinals. And in the receiving game, their elite wide receiver, DeAndre Hopkins, would finish with 83 yards on six receptions and two touchdowns. On the defensive side, for, also for Arizona, Christian Kirk had 70 yards on five receptions as he had two touchdowns as well. On the defensive side, Isaiah Simmons would lead the team in tackles as he had nine of them. Chandler Jones would finish with six tackles on the day as he had five sacks, um, five of the six sacks on the day. Isaiah Simmons, in addition to leading the team, would also finish with an interception as well. With this win, the Arizona Cardinals are now 1-0 to start their season, and the Tennessee Titans, with this loss, are now 0-1 to start theirs. Jumping out to Indianapolis, uh, Carson Wentz was able to get his debut for the Indianapolis Colts out of the way as he faced off against Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. However, the Seahawks would beat the Colts 28 to 7. The difference would be the first quarter where the Seahawks outscored the Colts 21 to 10. 
For Indianapolis, their starting quarterback, Carson Wentz, threw for 251 yards and two touchdowns. He also ran for 23 yards, giving him 274 total yards of offense. Their leading rusher, Jonathan Taylor, finished with 56 yards on 17 carries. He was also their leading receiver as he had 60 yards on six receptions. He had 116 total yards of offense for the team. On the defensive side of the ball, Kari Wills and Bobby Okareke finished with seven tackles each, leading the team. DeForest Buckner had six of them as he would finish with a sack of his own. For the Seattle Seahawks, their elite starting quarterback, Russell Wilson, would complete 18 of his 23 passes as he threw for 254 yards and four touchdowns. He also had nine yards on the ground to give him 263 total yards of offense. Their leading rusher was Chris Carson. He had 91 yards on six carries as he he also had 26 yards through the air giving him 150 117 total yards of offense um, and then also their leading receiver was Tyler Lockett. He had 100 yards on four receptions with two touchdowns. On the defensive side for Seattle, their elite linebacker Bobby Wagner would lead the team in tackles as he had 13. Jordan Brooks would also go on to have 11 tackles on the day for Seattle. Um, he would be second on the team in total tackles. With this win, the Seattle Seahawks are now 1-0 to start their season. And with this loss, the Indianapolis Colts are now 0-1 to start theirs. Jumping out to our nation's capital, the Washington football team hosted the LA Chargers and the Chargers would get their first win of the season, winning this one 20 to 16 as the Chargers were the only team to score a touchdown in the fourth to come from behind and win it thanks to a three yard touchdown from touchdown pass from Justin Herbert to Mike Williams. For the Washington football team, their starting quarterback, Taylor Heinke, would throw for 122 yards and a touchdown before he would leave the game with an injury. Their leading rusher, Antonio Gibson, had 90 yards on 20 carries. He also would have 18 yards on three receptions, giving him 108 total yards of offense for the football team. On the defensive side of the ball, Cole Holcomb and Bobby McCain would be the two players with double-digit sacks. Holcomb had 11 tackles. Bobby McCain had 10. And also, Will Jackson III would finish with an interception for himself. For the LA Chargers, their elite starting quarterback, Justin Herbert, would complete 31 of his 47 passes, throwing for 337 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Um, on the ground, Austin Eckler would lead the team in rushing as he had 57 yards on 15 carries, running for a touchdown. Through the air, their leading receiver was their elite was their elite wide receiver, Keenan Allen. He had 100 yards on nine receptions. Mike Williams had 82 yards on eight receptions as he had a touchdown as well. Also, their tight end, Jared Cook, had 56 yards on five receptions. On the defensive side of the ball, Kenneth Murray Jr. had 10 tackles. Second on the team with tackles was their elite DB, Derwin James, as he had six, as he had seven tackles of his own. With this win, the Los Angeles Chargers are now 1-0 to start their season off. And to start their season off, the Washington football team is now 0-1, especially picking up their first loss at home. Jumping out to Charlotte, North Carolina, the Carolina Panthers were able to beat the New York Jets as Sam Darnold was able to beat his own his old team to give the Panthers the a winning record to start the season. For the New York Jets, their starting quarterback, the second overall pick from the 2021 NFL Draft, Zach Wilson, threw for 258 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Um, through the air, the Jets' leading receiver was Corey Davis. He had 97 yards on five receptions as he had two touchdowns. On the defensive side of the ball, Delshawn Phillips led the team in tackles as he had 12 tackles on the day. For the Carolina Panthers, the their starting quarterback, Sam Darnold, threw for 279 yards and a touchdown. Their leading rusher was their elite running back, Christian McCaffrey. He had 98 yards on 21 carries. Through the air, he was their leading receiver as well as he had 89 yards on nine receptions. That would combine for 187 total yards of offense. Um, also for the Panthers, their wide receiver DJ Moore had 80 yards on six receptions. With this, or I'm sorry, on the defensive side of the ball, Shaq Thompson had 10 tackles. He would lead the team. He would also have a 29-yard interception as well. With this win, the Carolina Panthers are now 1-0. And with this loss, the New York Jets are now 0-1 to start their season.
Jumping out to Houston, Texas, the Houston Texans hosted the Jacksonville Jaguars in this AFC South matchup. The Houston Texans would come on top, winning this one 37 to 21. For the Jaguars, their elite starting quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, would complete 28 of his 51 passes in his debut, throwing for 332 yards, three touchdowns, and three picks. Um, on, through the air, their leading receiver was DJ Chark Jr. He had 86 yards on three receptions as he had a touchdown. Also, Marvin Jones Jr. had 77 yards on five receptions with a touchdown of his own. Um, through the... Or on... on, on on the defensive side of the ball, their leading tackler was Miles Jack. He would finish with nine tackles on the day, one of them for loss. For the Houston Texans, the win would go to their starting quarterback, Tyrod Taylor. He would throw for 291 yards and two touchdowns. He also ran for 40 yards on the ground, giving him 331 total yards of offense. There, the Texans' leading rusher was Mark Ingram. He would finish with 87 yards on 26 carries as he was able to pick up a touchdown. The Texans' leading receiver was Brandon Cooks. He had 132 yards on five receptions, and also Pharaoh Brown had 67 yards on four receptions. On the defensive side of the ball, Desmond King out of Iowa would finish with eight tackles on the day, leading the team. And three players on the team would finish with interceptions, Justin Reed, Vernon Hargreaves, and Christian Kirksey. With this win, the Houston Texans are now 1-0 on the season, as the Jaguars are now 0-1 to start their season with their new franchise quarterback. Jumping up to Kansas City, Missouri. Um, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs were able to beat the Browns 33-29. to This game would come very close. It would come down to the end as it would be an eight-yard touchdown to Travis Kelsey to give the Kansas City Chiefs what they needed to pick up a much-needed win at home, if that makes sense. For the Cleveland Browns in this loss, their starting quarterback, Baker Mayfield, would throw for 321 yards. He also threw for a pick as well. Their leading rusher, Nick Chubb, would, their elite running back, Nick Chubb, would finish with 83 yards on 15 carries as he had two touchdowns on the ground. He also had 18 yards through the air to give him 99 total yards of, or no, 101 total yards of offense. Their leading receiver was their tight end, David Njoku, who finished with 76 yards on three receptions. And on the defensive side of the ball, their leading tackler was Anthony Walker. Their elite defensive end, Miles Garrett, would finish with four tackles on the day as he got his first sack of the season. And then for the Kansas City Chiefs, their elite starting quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, would complete 27 of his 36 passes, throwing for 337 yards and three touchdowns. Their leading or also on the ground, Pat Mahomes ran for 18 yards on five carries. That would combine for 355 total yards of offense and four touchdowns. Uh, through the air, their, le their elite wide receiver Tyree Kill would finish with 197 yards on 11 receptions and a touchdown. Their elite tight end Travis Kelsey would finish with 76 yards on six receptions as he had two touchdowns for himself. On the defensive side of the ball, Legereus Sneed, Juan Thornhill, and Nick Bolton each had seven tackles for themselves, leading the team. Their elite defensive tackle Chris Jones would finish with three tackles, finishing with both of the team's sacks for the day. And then Mike Hughes would finish with the team's only interception. With this win, the Kansas City Chiefs are now 1-0 to start their season. And with this loss, the Cleveland Browns are now 33-29. and or, 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 I'm sorry. With this loss, the Cleveland Browns are 0-1 to start their season. And with this win, the Kansas City Chiefs are now 1-0. Jumping out to Boston, Massachusetts, the New England Patriots hosted the Miami Dolphins, and the Miami Dolphins were able to get their first win of the season under Tua Tagovailoa. For the New England Patriots, the start went to Mac Jones, their fifth, the, their first round pick out of Alabama. Mac Jones would throw for 281 yards and a touchdown. Their leading rusher, Damian Tom, Damian Harris, I'm sorry, had 100 yards on 23 carries. He also had 17 yards of the year, which gave him 117 total yards of offense. The Patriots' leading receiver was Nelson Aguilar. He had 72 yards on five receptions as he had a touchdown. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Kyle Duggar would finish with seven tackles. So would Devin McCourty. They would lead the team. And then Jonathan Jones would finish with the only interception of the game for New England off of Tua Tagovailoa. Tagovailoa, on the other hand, they're the Dolphins' elite starting quarterback, completed 16 of his 27 passes, throwing for 202 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. He also ran for a yard and a touchdown on the ground, so he had 203 yards of offense with two touchdowns. The Dolphins' leading rusher, Miles Gaskin, 
ran for 49 yards on nine carries. He had 27 yards through the year, so he had 76 total yards of offense. Their leading receiver, Devontae Parker, had 81 yards on four receptions. Jalen Waddell had 61 yards on four receptions and a touchdown, as that was one of Tua's former receivers as well. On the defensive side of the ball, Jerome Baker would finish with 12 tackles of his own. Their elite corner, Xavier Howard, would finish with five tackles as he finished with a fumble recovery for himself. With this win, the Miami Dolphins are now 17-16 and 16 to start their season. And with this loss, the New England Patriots are now 0-1 to start theirs. Looking out to New Orleans in the Superdome, the Saints were able to beat the Green Bay Packers 38-3 to to pull off a, to pull up their first win of the season. For the Green Bay Packers in this matchup, their goaded starting quarterback Aaron Rodgers will complete 15 of his 28 passes, throwing for 133 yards and two picks. Um, and then through the air, their leading receiver, their elite wide receiver, Devontae Adams, would finish with 56 yards on five receptions for the day. On the defensive side of the ball, Adrian Amos would lead the team in tackles as he had nine of them on the day as the Packers would not register a single sack. For the New Orleans Saints, their starting quarterback, Jameis Winston, threw for 148 yards and five touchdowns. He also ran for 37 yards on the ground, which would give him 185 total yards of offense. Their, leading, their elite running back, Alvin Kamara, was the leading rusher for the day. He had 83 yards on 20 carries. Uh, he would also finish with eight yards through the air and a touchdown. He had 91 total yards of offense and a touchdown for the day. The Saints leading receiver was Deontay Harris. He had 72 yards on two receptions as he had a touchdown. And then on the defensive side of the ball, their leading tackler was Zach Bond. He had five tackles on the day. Um, and then Marcus Williams and Paulson Adiba would finish with the interceptions for New Orleans. With this win, the New Orleans Saints are now 1-0 to start their season. And with this loss, the Green Bay Packers are now 0-1 to start theirs. Jumping up to NYC, the NYG New York Giants hosted the Denver Broncos. The Broncos were able to pick up their first win of the season, winning this one 27-13 after neither team scored in the first. And the Broncos had virtually outscored the Giants in the second, third, and fourth quarters after that. For the Giants in this matchup, their starting quarterback out of Duke, go Duke, Daniel Jones would throw for 276, 267 yards and a touchdown. He also ran for 27 yards and a touchdown as he was the team's leading rusher. He would go on to finish with 294 yards of offense and, th and two touchdowns, both the Giants' touchdowns. Their elite running back, Saquon Barkley, ran for 26 yards on 10 carries. He also had one yard through the air, so he had 27 yards of offense. The Giants' leading receiver was Sterling Shepard. He had 113 yards on seven receptions and a touchdown for the day. On the defensive side of everything, Logan Ryan would lead the team in tackles as he had 10 of them. He also would recover a fumble. And then for the Denver Broncos, their starting quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, would throw for 264 yards and two touchdowns. He also ran for 19 yards on the day. He had 283 total yards of offense. Their leading rusher, Melvin Gordon III, had 100, he had 101 yards on 11 carries as he had a touchdown for himself as well. He had 16 yards through the, or he had 17 yards through the air as well. He had 118 total yards of offense on the day. And the Broncos leading receiver was Jerry Judy. He had 70 two yards on six receptions for the day on the defensive side of everything Kyle Fuller Justin Simmons and Ronald Darby would lead the team in tackles as they all had six of them and then the Broncos elite outside linebacker Von Miller would finish with three tackles of the day he would finish with both of the Broncos sacks as well with this win the Denver Broncos are now 1-0 to start their season and with this loss the New York Giants are now 0-1 to start theirs Last but not least, jumping into last night, jumping into the first Sunday night football game of the season, the Los Angeles Rams hosted the Chicago Bears, and the Rams were able to get their first win of the season, beating the Bears 34-14 to after scoring in every single quarter of the game. For Chicago, their starting quarterback, Andy Dalton, threw for 206 yards and an interception. Their leading rusher, David Montgomery, had 108 yards on 16 carries and a touchdown. He would also have 10 yards through the air to give him 118 total yards of offense. Offense. On the defensive side of the ball for Chicago, their linebacker Roquan Smith would lead the team in tackles as he had 11 of them. Um, and then for the Los Angeles Rams, their newest starting quarterback, Matthew Stafford, would throw for 321 yards and three touchdowns. 
Their leading rusher, Daryl Henderson Jr., finished with 70 yards on 16 carries and a touchdown for himself. He had 17 yards on a reception, so that gave him 18, 87 yards of offense. Their leading receiver, Cooper Cup, had 108 yards on seven receptions as he had a touchdown. Also, Van Jefferson had 80 yards on two receptions as he had a touchdown as well. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Jordan Fuller would finish with 11 tackles. Taylor Rapp and Kenny Young would finish with 10 tackles themselves. Jalen Ramsey, their elite corner, would finish with nine tackles for himself. And then David Long Jr., their DB, who actually went to high school with me at Loyola High School in Los Angeles, would finish with the LA Rams' first interception of the season. With this win, the LA Rams are now 1-0 to start their season. And with this loss, the Chicago Bears are now 0-1. That is what the NFL is looking like yesterday in the last football game of the of the first week of the 2021 season will take place tonight as the Las Vegas Raiders host the Baltimore Ravens at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So that's what's going on with the NFL. Taking a look at what's going on with the MLB, looking into yesterday's matchup, starting off in Tampa or starting off in Detroit. The Detroit Tigers would host the Tampa Bay Rays. And in a game that would go to extra innings, going on to the 11th, the Detroit Tigers would beat the Tampa Bay Rays 8-7 to after Robbie Grossman's walk would give the, after his forced walk would give the Tigers the win. For the Tampa Bay Rays in this matchup, the start was given to Luis Patino. Luis Patino would go on to allow two earned runs and 4.1 innings pitch as he struck out three. The loss would go to the Rays' closer for the day, J.P. Fire Eisen. Fire Eisen would allow one run in .2 innings pitched. He, would, he was unable to finish the 10th as his walk would be what lost them the game. With this loss, Fire Eisen is 4-4 four and four on the year. In the Rays' batting lineup, their third baseman, Yandy Diaz, went 2-5 for five with three RBIs. Um, he was the only player on the team with more than one hit. For and also for them, their elite designated hitter Nelson Cruz would go one for four with an RBI and two runs. He hit his 31st home run of the season. For the Detroit Tigers in this matchup, the start was given to Tarek Skubal. He allowed no earned runs and one hit in three innings pitched as he struck out six. The win was given to the Tigers' closer, Kyle Funkhauser. Funkhauser allowed no earned runs in the 11th inning as he struck out a batter. With this win, he's seven and three on the year. In the Tigers' batting lineup, their center fielder, Akil Badu, went two for five with a run. Their first baseman, Jonathan Scope, went two for six with two runs. Their third baseman, Jamer Condelario, went two for five with three RBIs and two runs. He hit his 13th and 14th home runs of the season. With this win, the Detroit Tigers are now 68-76. and 76. That is the third best record in the American League Central as they've won five of their last 10. They now trail the Chicago White Sox by 14 and a half games in the division at the moment. And with this loss, the Tampa Bay Rays are now 89 and 54. That is the best record in the American League East, let alone the American League. They have now lost five of their last 10 games as they now sit nine games ahead of the second place Toronto Blue Jays within their division. And also they're holding on to that number one spot in the American League playoff picture, sitting ahead of the second seed Houston Astros out west. And they also sit ahead of the Chicago White Sox, who at the moment are sitting on top of the American League Central. Uh, jumping out to Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Pirates hosted the Washington Nationals. The Nationals would end up beating the Pirates 6-2 to two after scoring four of their six runs in the fourth inning. For Pittsburgh, the loss went to their starting pitcher, Bryce Wilson. He allowed five earned runs and 4.1 innings pitched as he was unable to strike out a batter. With this loss, Bryce Wilson is 2-7. and seven. In the Pirates batting lineup, their shortstop, Kevin Newman, would go 2-3 for three with a run. Uh, there, he would be the only player on the team with more than one hit. For the Washington Nationals, however, the win went to their starting pitcher, Patrick Corbin. He allowed two earned runs off of four hits and seven innings pitched as he struck out four batters. With this win, he's now 8-14 and 14 on the year. The save would end up going to the Nats closer, Kyle Finnegan. Finnegan allowed no earned runs and 1.2 innings pitched as he struck out a batter. He would finish off the 8th and ninth innings for the Nats as he picked up his ninth save of the season. In the Nats batting lineup, their elite right fielder, Juan Soto, went 2-3 for three with a run on the day. Um, their left fielder, Yadiel Hernandez, would end up going 2-5 for five with an RBI. And then their third baseman for the day, Adrian Sanchez, would end up going 2-4 for four with a run. With this win, the Washington Nationals are 59-84. and 84. That is the worst record in the National League East. 
They've won four of their last 10 games as they trail the Atlanta Braves by 17 and a half games in the division. With this loss, the Pittsburgh Pirates are 52 and 91. That is the worst record in the National League Central as they've lost six of their last 10. They trail the Milwaukee Brewers by 36 and a half games in the division. And they are one of two teams in the National League who have been eliminated from playoff contention this year alongside the Arizona Diamondbacks. Jumping out to Baltimore, the Baltimore Orioles hosted the Toronto Blue Jays, who are fighting for that playoff spot. The Blue Jays were able to beat the Orioles 22-7 after hanging up 16 runs in the first three innings of the game, scoring 10 of them in the third. For the Baltimore Orioles in this matchup, the loss would be given to their starting pitcher for the day, Zach Lothar. Lothar allowed, two, he allowed seven earned runs and two innings pitched as he struck out four. With this loss, Zach Lothar is 0-2 on the season. In the Orioles batting lineup, their first baseman, Ryan Mountcastle, went 2-5 for five with an RBI and a run. He hit his 28th home run of the season yesterday. And also for the Orioles, their catcher, Austin Wins, would end up going 2-4 for four with three RBIs and a run. He would hit his third home run of the season. For the Toronto Blue Jays, the win went to their starting pitcher, Steven Matz. He allowed five earned runs off of six hits and six innings pitched, striking out six. With this win, Steven Matz is 12-7. and seven. In the Blue Jays batting lineup, their all-star shortstop, Bo Bichette, went 2-4 for four with two runs. Their right fielder, Teoscar Hernandez, would end up going 2-3 for three with five RBIs and four runs. He hit his 27th home run of the season. The Blue Jays elite designated hitter, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., would go 1-3 for three with an RBI and three runs as he hit his 44th home run of the season. Their left fielder, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., would go 2-3 for three with seven RBIs and five runs on the day. Their center fielder, Randall Gritchick, would go 3-6 for six with an RBI and a run. Um, additionally, their... Catcher Danny Jansen went four for six with four RBIs and two runs on the day. Their third baseman for the day, Bravik Valera, will go two for six with three RBIs and a with three RBIs total. With this win, the Toronto Blue Jays are 80 and 63. That is the second best record in the American League East win percentage wise as they have one less win and one less loss than the Boston Red Sox. They've won their last three games and they've won nine of their last 10. At the moment, they trail the Tampa Bay Rays by nine games in the division. And right now they are holding on to that top American League wildcard spot as they are sitting even with the Boston Red Sox who are holding on to that second spot. With this loss, the Baltimore Orioles are now 46 and 97. That is the worst record in the American League east the worst record in the american league and the worst record in all of the majors in total they've lost their last three games and they've lost five of their last 10 they now trail the tampa bay rays by 43 games in the division um that is the gap between the best and worst teams in the american league at the moment um just to get a sense and the orioles are one of two teams in the american league who have been eliminated from playoff contention as they sit alongside the texas rangers in that camp Jumping out to Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Phillies hosted the Colorado Rockies. The Rockies would end up beating the Phillies 5-4 to four as they scored all five of their runs in the fifth and seventh innings. For the Phillies in this matchup, the start was given to Aaron Nola. He allowed three earned runs and 5.1 innings pitched. He would strike out 10 batters before getting pulled in the sixth. The loss would go to the Philadelphia Phillies' second relief pitcher, Hector Neres. Hector Neres would allow two earned runs in the seventh inning. And the, with in one inning pitched, I'm sorry. And with this loss, he's now two and six. <clears throat> in the Phillies batting lineup, their their all star catcher J T. Real Muto went three for four with an RBI and two runs. Their elite right fielder Bryce Harper would end up going one for three with an RBI and a run as Bryce Harper hit his 32nd home run of the season. For the Colorado Rockies, the start was given to their starting pitcher for the day, obviously, Ryan Feltner. Ryan Feltner would allow two earned runs and 3.2 innings pitched as he struck out six. The win was given to the Rockies' second relief pitcher on the day, Ashton Godot. Godot would allow one earned run and two innings pitched as he pitched the fifth and sixth innings um he would strike out two batters in that span he would pick up his first blown save of the season but regardless he picked up his first win he's now one to know this year 
The save, however, would go to the Rockies closer. And the closer for yesterday was Carlos Estevez. Estevez would allow no earned runs and only one hit in the ninth inning. With this save, he now has seven on the year. In the Rockies batting lineup, their second baseman, Brendan Rodgers, went three for four. Their catcher, Elias Diaz, went two for four with two runs. And then their center fielder, Garrett Hampson, went three for four with five RBIs and two runs. He would hit his 10th and 11th home runs of the season. With this win, the Colorado Rockies are now 66 and 78. That is the fourth best record in the National League West. They've won five of their last 10 games as they trail the San Francisco Giants by 27 and a half games in the division. With this loss, the Philadelphia Phillies are now 72 and 71. That is the second best record in the National League East. They've lost seven of their last 10. They trail the Atlanta Braves by four and a half games in the division as they are sitting two and a half games behind the San Diego Padres in that wild card race. They are the third team on the outside looking in as they currently trail the Cincinnati Reds and the St. Louis Cardinals as well. Jumping out to Cleveland, the Cleveland Indians hosted the Milwaukee Brewers, who are currently leading the NL Central. The Brewers would end up beating the Indians 11-1, to coming off of their um, no-hitter win the previous night. Uh, and for the Indians in this matchup, who were held to only four hits all game today, they lost one to their starting pitcher, Aaron Savali. He allowed seven earned runs and three innings pitched as he struck out three. With this loss, he's 10-4. and four. In the Indians batting lineup, nobody on the team would finish in more than one hit and now be attributed to great pitching from Milwaukee. The win went to their starting pitcher, Eric Lauer. He allowed one earned run off of three hits and 5.1 innings pitched. He struck out eight on the day. With this win, Eric Lauer is six and five. The save, however, for the Milwaukee Brewers went to Aaron Ashby. Aaron Ashby would pick up his first save of the season as he would allow no earned runs in the last three innings of the game. He would strike out five in that span. In the Brewers batting lineup, their second baseman, Colton Wong, would go three for five with two RBIs and two runs. He would hit his 12th and 13th home runs of the season. Their right fielder, Avisail Garcia, will go two for five with three RBIs and two runs as he hit his 26th and 27th home runs of the year. Their left fielder, Jace Peterson, went two for five with a run. Their shortstop, Luis Urias, went two for five with a run as well. And then the their catcher for the day, Manny Pina, would end up going three for five with three RBIs and two runs. Manny Pino would hit his 10th home run of the season. With this win, the Milwaukee Brewers are 89 and 55. That is the best record in the National League Central as they've won their last five games. They've won seven of their last 10. They sit 14 games ahead of the second place Cincinnati Reds in their own division. Right now, they're holding on to the second seed in the National League playoff picture, trailing the National League West leading San Francisco Giants holding that number one seed, and they sit ahead of the three seed Atlanta Braves, who are currently sitting on top of the National League East. With this loss, the Cleveland Indians are now 69 and 72. That is the second best record in the American League Central. They've lost their last three games and they've lost eight of their last 10. At the moment, they trail the Chicago White Sox by 12 games in the division. Jumping out to Atlanta, the Atlanta Braves leading the National League East hosted the, the Miami Marlins. The score was tied at three going into the bottom of the seventh. And then it will be a pair of solo home runs from the Braves elite infielders, Ozzy Albies and Freddie Freeman to give them the win. For the Miami Marlins in this matchup, the or sorry, for the Miami Marlins in this matchup, the start was given to Edward Cabrera. Cabrera would allow two earned runs and 3.2 innings pitched as he struck out four. The loss was given to the Miami Marlins setup relief pitcher, Anthony Bass. Bass would allow two earned runs in the seventh inning. With this loss, he's three and eight on the year. In the Marlins batting lineup, their right fielder, Jesus Sanchez, went three for four with two RBIs and a run. He would hit his 10th home run of the season as he was the only player on the team with more than one hit. For the Atlanta Braves in this matchup, the start went to Max Freed. He allowed three earned runs and six innings pitched as he struck out seven. The win would go to the Braves' first relief pitcher on the day, Jacob Webb. Webb would allow no earned runs in the seventh inning as he struck out a batter. With this win, he's now four and two on the season. The save would go to the Braves' closer, Will Smith. He allowed no earned runs in the ninth inning, and this would be his 32nd save of the season. In the Braves batting lineup, their elite second baseman, Ozzie Albies, went two for four with an RBI and a run. He would go on to hit his 28th home run of the season. 
Their elite first baseman, Freddie Freeman, would go one for three with an RBI and a run as he would hit his 30th home run of the year. Um, and with this win, the Atlanta Braves are now 76 and 66. That is the best record in the National League East. They've won six of their last 10 games as they sit four and a half games ahead of the second place Philadelphia Phillies in their own division. Right now, they're holding on to the three seed in the National League playoff picture as they sit behind the one seed San Francisco Giants out west and they sit behind the second seed Milwaukee Brewers from the central. With this loss, the Miami Marlins are 60 and 83. That is the fourth best record in the National League East as they've lost five of their last 10 games. They now trail the Atlanta Braves by 16 and a half games in the division at the moment. Jumping out to Houston, the Houston Texans hosted the Los Angeles Angels. In this matchup, the Astros would beat the Angels 3-1. to one. Uh, The Angels would tie the game up at the top of the fifth, but it'll be a two-run home run from Kyle Tucker to give the Astros the lead that would give them the eventual win. For the Los Angeles Angels in this matchup, the start went to Jaime Barria. He allowed one earned run in four innings pitched as he struck out six. Uh, the loss, however, would go to the Angels' first relief pitcher, Kose Quijada. Quijada would go on to allow two earned runs in the fifth inning as he struck out two. With this loss, Quijada is 0-1 on the season. In the Angels' batting lineup, nobody on the team would finish with more than one hit. Their right fielder, Juan Lagares, would go one for two with an RBI and a run. He hit his sixth home run of the season. That would be the only run brought home for the Angels. For the Houston Astros, the win went to their starting pitcher, Lance McCullers Jr. He allowed one earned run and only three hits in six innings as he struck out seven. With this win, he's now 12-4 and four on the season, and the save was given to the Astros' closer, Ryan Presley. Ryan Presley would allow no earned runs in the ninth inning as he struck out a batter. This would be his 24th save of the year. In the Astros batting lineup, their first baseman, Yuli Gurriel, would go four for four with an RBI and a run. He would be the only player on the team with more than one hit. With this win, the Houston Astros are 83 and 59. That is the best record in the American League West. They've won five of their last 10 games as they sit six and a half games ahead of the Oakland Athletics and the Seattle Mariners, who are both tied for the second best record in the division. Also, the Astros are holding on to the second seed in the American League playoff pictures as they sit behind the first seed Tampa Bay Rays leading the East, and they sit ahead of the third seed Chicago White Sox, who are currently leading the Central. With this loss, the Los Angeles Angels are now 70-73. and That is the fourth best record in the American League West. They've lost six of their last 10 games as they now trail the Houston Astros by 13 and a half games in the division. Jumping up to Minneapolis, the Minnesota Twins hosted the Kansas City Royals. The Royals would end up beating the Twins 5-3. to The score was tied by the Twins in the bottom of the sixth. And then the top of the eighth, the Royals would end up breaking that tie thanks to an RBI single from Kyle Isbell. They would also score another run in the ninth to increase their lead to win their 65th game of the season. For the Minnesota Twins in this matchup, the start went to Bailey Ober. He allowed three earned runs and 4.1 innings pitched as he struck out six. The loss would go to the Minnesota Twins setup relief pitcher, Jorge Alcala. He would allow an earned run in the eighth inning as he struck out a batter. With this loss, he's now three and six. In the Twins batting lineup, their center fielder, Byron Buxton, went two for three with two runs. He was the only player on the team with more than one hit. For the Kansas City Royals, the start was given to Chris Bubich. Chris Bubich would allow three runs and 5.1 innings pitched as he struck out six. The win was given to the Royals' second relief pitcher on the day, Jake Brent. Brent would allow no earned runs in the seventh inning as he struck out two. With this win, he's four and two on the season. The save was given to the Royals' closer, Scott Barlow. Barlow would allow no earned runs in the ninth inning as he struck out two. With this save, he now has 12 on the year. In the Royals' batting lineup, their elite second baseman, Whit Merrifield, would end up going three for five with an RBI and two runs. Their left fielder, Andrew Benintendi, would be the only other player with more than one hit. He went two for four with an RBI. With this win, the Kansas City Royals are 65-78. and 78. That is the fourth best record in the American League Central. They've won six of their last 10 games, and they now trail the Chicago White Sox by 17 games in the division. 
with this loss, the Minnesota Twins are now 63 and 80. That is the worst record in the American League Central as they've lost five of their last 10. At the moment, they trail the Chicago White Sox by 19 games in the division. Jumping out to Chicago, speaking of the White Sox, the American League Central leaders were able to beat the Red Sox 2-1. to one. Um, The score after the White Sox, we have the 1-0 lead. Alex Verdugo for the Red Sox would tie the game at 1 at the top of the ninth off of a sack fly. But then the White Sox would win it off of a walk-off solo home run from Lurie Garcia to give them their 82nd win of the season. For the Boston Red Sox in this matchup, the start was given to Nick Pavetta. He allowed an earn, he allowed one run in 5.1 innings pitched as he struck out five. The loss, however, was given to the Red Sox closer, Garrett Whitlock. Garrett Whitlock would allow an earned run in 0.2 innings pitched as he struck out two. He would not finish the ninth inning. With this loss, Garrett Whitlock is 8-4 and four on the season. In the Red Sox batting lineup, the only player with more than one hit was their shortstop, Jose Iglesias. For the Chicago White Sox, on the other hand, the start went to Lance Lynn. He allowed no earned runs and only two hits in the first five innings of the game as he struck out nine. The win was given to the White Sox elite closer, Craig Kimbrell. He allowed an earned run in the ninth inning as he struck out two. This will be his fifth blown save of the season, but with this win, he's now four and four. With this, or in the White Sox batting lineup, nobody on the team would finish with more than one hit. But Luis Garcia, the White Sox shortstop, would end up going, I'm sorry, Leori Garcia, the White Sox shortstop, would end up going one for four with an RBI and a run as he is fifth home run of the season. With this win, the Chicago White Sox are now 82 and 61. That is the best record in the American League Central as they've won five of their last 10 games. They sit 12 games ahead of the second place Cleveland Indians, and they are holding on to that third seed in the American League playoff picture, trailing the, Houston, the second seed Houston Astros of the West, and they also trail the first seed Tampa Bay Rays, who are currently sit holding on to that number one spot. With this loss, the Boston Red Sox are now 81 and 64. That is now the third best record in the American League as they are sitting about even with the Toronto Blue Jays. They've lost five of their last 10 games as alongside the Blue Jays, they trail the Tampa Bay Rays by nine games in the division. At the moment, the Red Sox are holding on to that second American League wildcard spot as they are sitting even with the Toronto Blue Jays who are holding on to that top American League wildcard spot at the moment. Um, Just to give a sense of where the Red Sox are, just to show how close it is. And they also sit one game ahead of the New York Yankees, who are at the moment the first team on the outside of the American League wildcard looking in. Jumping out to St. Louis, the St. Louis Cardinals hosted the Cincinnati Reds. The Cardinals would end up blanking the Reds 2 to nothing to pick up their 73rd win of the season to move closer to the Reds in the wild card picture. For the Cincinnati Reds in this matchup, the loss went to their starting pitcher, Sonny Gray. Gray allowed two earned runs off of three hits and seven innings pitched as he struck out six. With this loss, Sonny Gray is 7-7 seven and seven on the season. In the Reds' batting lineup, nobody on the team would finish with more than one hit, and that would be attributed to great pitching from St. Louis. For the Cardinals, the win went to their starting pitcher, J.A. Happ. J.A. Happ allowed no earned runs and only two hits in 5.1 innings pitched. He would strike out four. With this win, he's now 9-8 on the year. The save would go to the Cardinals' closer, Giovanni Gallegos. He allowed no earned runs in the ninth inning as he struck out two. With this save, he now has eight on the year. In the Cardinals batting lineup, nobody on the team would finish with more than one hit. However, their elite third baseman, Nolan Arenado, would go one for three with two RBIs and a run as his 2-1 home run in the first would be what what the Cardinals needed to win this game. With this win, the St. Louis Cardinals are now 73-69. and That is the third best record in the National League Central as they've won their last two games and they've won five of their last 10. At the moment, they trailed the Milwaukee Brewers by 15 games in the division. And right now, they trail the San Diego Padres for that second spot in the National League wildcard by a game as they are the second team on the outside looking in. They also trail the Cincinnati Reds. With this loss, the Cincinnati Reds are now 75-69. and 69. That is the second best record in the National League Central. They've lost their last two games and they've lost six of their last 10. They trail the Milwaukee Brewers by 14 games in the division. And right now they are sitting about even with the San Diego Padres who are holding on to that second wildcard spot. The Reds are the first team on the outside looking in because they have one more win and one more loss than the Padres, which, which is what gives the Padres that slight edge. So right now, that is how close the National League wild card is. Jumping out to Chicago, the Chicago Cubs, the Cardinals' rivals, hosted the San Francisco Giants, the best team in baseball. The Giants were able to beat the Cubs 6-5. to five. 
um, as they were able to score five of their six between the second and fifth inning. For the Chicago Cubs in this matchup, the loss was given to their starting pitcher, Max Ste- or Justin Steele. Justin Steele would allow four earned runs in five innings as he struck out four. He, was, he would allow five runs in five innings as he struck out four. With this loss, Steele is three and three on the year. In the Cubs batting lineup, their center fielder, Rafael Ortega, would go two for four with a run. Their right fielder, Ian Happ, would go two for five with an RBI and a run for himself. For the San Francisco Giants, the win went to their starting pitcher, Alex Webb, or Logan Webb. Logan Webb would allow five runs and six innings pitched as he struck out five. With this win, Logan Webb is 10-3 and three on the season. The save will go to the Giants' closer, Jake McGee. McGee allowed no earned runs in the ninth inning as he picked up his 31st save of the year. In the Giants' batting lineup, their left fielder, Darren Ruff, will go two for five. Their elite right fielder, Chris Bryant, will go two for five with an RBI and two runs. Their first baseman, Wilmer Flores, went three for three with three RBIs and two runs as he had his 18th home run of the season. With this win, the San Francisco Giants Giants are now 93 and 50. That is still the best record in all of baseball right now as they have now won their last seven games. That is currently the best winning streak in all of baseball at the moment. They've won nine of their last 10. At the moment, they sit two and a half games ahead of the second place LA Dodgers in the division. And right now they're holding on to that number one spot in the National League playoff picture, sitting ahead of the second seed, Milwaukee Brewers leading the Central. And they sit ahead of the third seed, Atlanta Braves, who lead the East. With this loss, the Chicago Cubs are now 65-79. and That is the fourth best record in the National League Central as they've lost their last three games and they've lost four of their last 10. They trail the Milwaukee Brewers by 24 games in the division at the moment as they are a couple, they're a few games away from being eliminated from playoff contention. Jumping out to the Bay Area, the Oakland Athletics hosted the Texas Rangers, and the Rangers would be the Athletics again. They won this one 4-3, scoring all four of their runs in the third and fourth inning before the A's could score a single run at all. For the Athletics, the loss went to their starting pitcher, James Caprillian. He would allow four earned runs and 3.2 innings pitched as he struck out five. With this loss, he's now 7-5. In the A's batting lineup, their center fielder, Starling Marte, would end up going two for four with a run. And their first baseman, Matt Olson, went one for four with two RBIs and a run as he had his 34th home run of the season. For the Texas Rangers, the win went to their starting pitcher, Taylor Hearn. Taylor Hearn allowed three earned runs off of five hits and six innings pitched as he struck out two. With this win, he's now six and four on the season. The save would end up going to the Rangers' closer, Joe Barlow. He allowed no earned runs in the ninth inning as he picked up his sixth save of the season. In the Rangers' batting lineup, their shortstop, Isaiah kiner Falefa will go three for five with two RBIs and a run. Also, their designated hitter, Yohel Bozo, would end up going two for four for the day with a run. With this win, the Texas Rangers are 53-89. and 89. That is the worst record in the American League West. They've won their last two games, and they've won six of their last ten. They now trail the Houston Astros by 30 games in the division as they are one of two teams in the American League who have been eliminated from playoff contention. They sit alongside the Baltimore Orioles. With this loss, the Oakland Athletics are now 77 and 66. They are tied with the Seattle Mariners for the second best record in the American League West. They've lost their last two games and they've lost six of their last 10. At the moment, the Oakland Athletics now trail the Houston Astros by six and a half games in the division. And right now, they trail the Boston Red Sox by three games for that second American League wildcard spot as the A's are tied for the second spot on the outside looking in. They also trailed the New York Yankees in that race as well. Jumping out to Los Angeles, the reigning World Series champs, LA Dodgers, hosted the San Diego Padres. The Dodgers would end up winning this one 8 to nothing as they held the Padres to only one hit all game. For the San Diego Padres, the loss or the start would end up going to their elite starting pitcher, Blake Snell. He would allow no earned runs and point two innings pitch as he would get pulled in the first inning. The loss would go to the Padres' second relief pitcher, Denelson Lamette. He would allow one earned run in .2 innings pitch as he struck out a batter. With this loss, he's now 2-4. and four. In the Padres batting lineup, the only player to register a hit was their first baseman, Eric Hosmer. He went one for three. For the LA Dodgers, the win went to their elite start, went to their goaded starting pitcher, Max Scherzer. Scherzer allowed only one hit in eight innings pitched as he struck out nine. With this win, Max Scherzer is 14 and four on the season. 
Um, and in the Dodgers batting lineup, their elite center fielder, Mookie Betts, would go two for four with two RBIs and two runs. Mookie Betts would hit his 21st home run of the season. Their left fielder, Gavin Lux, would go two for two with a run. And with this win, or also for the Dodgers, their elite shortstop, Corey Seager, would go one for four with an RBI and a run. He hit his ninth home run of the season. With this win, the LA Dodgers are now 91 and 53. That is the second best record in all of baseball, but is still the second best record in the National League West. They now trail the San Francisco Giants by two and a half games in the division uh, as they've won their last three games. They've won six of their last 10. Right now, they're holding on to that top National League wildcard spot, sitting 16 games ahead of the second place San Diego Padres in that playoff race, just to show how comfortable the LA Dodgers are. With this loss, the San Diego Padres are now 74 and 68. That is the third best record in the National League West. They've lost their last three games and they've lost six of their last 10. At the moment, they trail the San Francisco Giants by 18 and a half games in the division as they are now holding on to that second National League wildcard spot only because they have one less win and one less loss than the Cincinnati Reds. And because of how close they are, just because of how close that is, the Reds are even with them, but the Padres are still holding on to that spot just to get a sense of how close the Padres are to losing that second wildcard spot. Jumping out to Seattle, the Seattle Mariners hosted the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks would end up beating the Mariners 5-4 to four to pick up their 47th win of the season. Um, for the Mariners in this matchup, the start was given to Yusei Kikuchi. He allowed only one earned run in five innings pitch as he struck out eight. The loss for the Seattle Mariners would go to their first relief pitcher, Anthony Misowich. Misowich would allow three earned runs without registering a single out in the sixth inning. With this loss, he's now five and four and five on the season. For the Seattle Mariners in their batting lineup, nobody on the team would finish with more than one hit. Um, their right fielder, Mitch Hanniger, would go one for three with an RBI and a run. He would hit his 32nd home run of the season. For the Arizona Diamondbacks, the win was given to their starting pitcher, Tyler Gilbert. Tyler Gilbert would allow two earned runs and 5.1 innings pitch, striking out two. With this win, he's two and two on the year. The save for the Arizona Diamondbacks would end up going to their closer for the, for the day, J.B. Wendelkin. J.B. Wendelkin would allow two earned runs in the ninth inning, striking out a batter, but with the save, he now has his first save of the year. In the Diamondbacks batting lineup, their first baseman, Christian Walker, went two for four with a run. And then their designated hitter for the day, Seth Beer, would end up going two for four with a run. And an RBI. With this win, the Arizona Diamondbacks are now 47 and 96. That is the worst record in the National League West as they've won their last two games. They've won three of their last 10. They also hold the worst record in the National League as they are one of two teams in the National League who have been eliminated from playoff contention as they sit in that camp alongside the Pittsburgh Pirates. With this loss, the Seattle Mariners are now 77 and 66. They are tied with the Oakland Athletics for the second best record in the American League West. They've lost their last two games and they now have lost four of their last 10. They trail the Houston Astros by six and a half games in the division as well. And just alongside the A's, they now trail the Red Sox by three games in for that second American League wildcard spot as they're tied for the second spot on the outside looking in as they only trail the New York Yankees. Speaking of the New York Yankees, speaking of, it was yet another matchup of the Subway Series between the Mets and the Yankees. In this matchup, the Mets would beat the Yankees 7-6. to six. The score, the Yankees would tie the game up at 6, and then, the, and then the Mets would walk away with it with Francisco Lindor's 17th home run of the season and his third home run of the game to give the Mets their 72nd win of the season. For the New York Yankees, the start was given to Clark Schmidt. Schmidt allowed five runs and 4.1 innings pitched as he struck out two. The loss would go to the Yankees' closer for the day, Chad Green. Chad Green allowed one earned run in the eighth inning as he struck out a batter. With this loss, he's now 7-7 seven and seven on the year. In the Yankees batting lineup, their elite second baseman, DJ LeMay, he will go three for four with two runs. Their elite left fielder, Giancarlo San, will go two for five with three RBIs and a run. Stan hit his 27th home run of the season.
Their elite shortstop, Glaber Torres, went one for four with two RBIs and a run as he had his seventh home run of the season. And for the New York Mets, the start was given to Carlos Carrasco. He allowed two earned runs off of three hits in five innings as he struck out five. The win was given to the Mets' setup relief pitcher, Seth Lugo. Seth Lugo allowed no earned runs in the eighth inning as he struck out two with his winnings four and two on the season. The save will go to the Mets' closer, Edwin Diaz. He allowed no earned runs in the ninth inning as he struck out two, picking up his 29th save of the season. In the Mets' batting lineup, their elite shortstop, Francisco Lindor, will go three for four with five RBIs and three runs. His three hits were his 15th, 16th, and 17th home runs of the season. Their elite second baseman, Javier Baez, would go two for four. Their left fielder, Jeff McNeil, went two for four as well. With this win, the New York Mets are now 72-72. and That is the third best record in the National League East as they've won five of their last 10. They now trail the Atlanta Braves by five games in the division at the moment. Uh, They are also sitting three games behind the San Diego Padres for that second National League wildcard spot as they are the fourth team on the outside looking in, trailing the Cincinnati Reds, the St. Louis Cardinals, and the Philadelphia Phillies as well. With this loss, the New York Yankees are now 79-64. and That is the fourth best record in the American League East. They've lost eight of their last 10 games as they now trail the Tampa Bay Rays by 10 games uh, in the American in the, in the division at the moment, they are sitting one game behind the Toronto Blue Jays, who are holding on to that second spot and that first American League wild card spot. And they are also sitting a game behind the Boston Red Sox, who are the third best team in the American League East and hold the second American League wild card spot. Just to give a sense of how close these teams are, like I said, the Yankees are one game out. That is what the MLB is looking like following yesterday's matchups. And taking a quick look at what's been going on in the world of soccer as we just depart from uh, the country for a second. Looking at England first, Liverpool was able to beat Leeds United 3 to nothing. They were able to get a, their first goal came from their elite Egyptian forward, Mo Salah. And then, of course, on the other end, so Sadio Mane would score in the 92nd minute. In the middle of that, Fabinho would score in the 50th minute. With this 3 to nothing win, Liverpool is now tied with Chelsea, Man United, and Everton for the top of the Premier League table. Looking at it, Spanish La Liga, Atletico Madrid was able to beat Espanyol 2-1 as Tomas Lamar's 90 or 99th minute goal would give Atletico what they needed for the win. Real Madrid was able to beat Celta Vigo 5-2 off of Karim Benzema's hat trick. Also, their newest midfielder, Eduard Camavinga from the French national team, was able to score in his debut. With these wins for Real and Atletico, Real and Atletico are currently sharing the top of La Liga table with Valencia, who came off of a 4-1 win against Asasuna yesterday. Um, and then looking at an Italian Serie A, um, Inter Milan drew with Sampdoria, and their second goal come from Lautaro Martinez. Uh, also, AC Milan was able to beat Lazio 2 to nothing as Zlatan Ibrahimovic, their elite Swedish striker, would score in his first goal back in about a couple of years. Um, with this win, AC Milan is now trying to get back to the top of the Serie A table. They are now tied with Napoli and Roma as the only undefeated teams in Serie A so far. Right now, that is what the world of sports is looking like as we navigate through, uh, especially until today, Monday, September 30, 13th, 2021, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims. First off, I want to thank the MLB, the FIFA, and NFL websites for giving me the facts and figures that I needed in order to complete this episode. Um, I apologize, of course, if I got any names wrong. I do plan on getting the names right. And with that said, I once again want to thank everybody for listening to all 61, 62 minutes of this piece. I hope all is well. And I hope to catch you guys with another episode after this. Thanks for listening to my piece. I hope all is well. And I'll catch you with another episode right after this. So thanks for listening to my piece. And peace out. I'll be right back.